Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is my makeup collection and inventory series for 2024. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be one of six installments. I will be reusing this intro for all of them to show you my entire makeup collection in terms of foundation, concealer, bronzer, highlighter, blush, and lipstick. And we're gonna do swatches. So I'm just reusing this. So I'll I'll have some text on the screen to let you know which unstill installment it is you're watching today. Let's just get to it because these videos can be very long. <laughs> In case you're new here, you've never been to my channel before, then maybe it's good to know who I am and what I like doing on this channel. My name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying Essa and Catrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in as well, then I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. Welcome to part five of my makeup inventory. And this is going to be blush. And there's a lot of blush and especially this section here, which is my cream and liquid blush has grown exponentially. The powder blushes I did pretty well on. Like I haven't been buying too many of these compared to what I used to have previously. I just have a couple of things in here that I really do adore. Um, that I've added to my collection over time. But yeah, it's definitely like this section that has seen the most expansion. So let me start with the cream and liquid blushes first, swatch all of those out, and then we'll head into the powder blush. All right, so these are all of my cream and liquid blushes laid out, and it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> um, because they're cream and liquid, it's gonna be difficult to swatch things side by side because once I start to rub things out so you can see what it would look like, um, it's, it's just going to be a mess. So we're just going to use the back of my hand as a swatching ground. And we're going to kick things off with the Jones Road. Um, this is the Miracle Balm in Tawny Fauve. This works best if you scoop it out. So not with fingers, but I'm, my tool is like, my, my camera is blocking my drawer. So I'm going to have to do it like this. Um, so this again, like the foundation that I have from the brand, this smells really strongly of a citrusy kind of scent. This can be used on the face as well as the cheeks. Um, and this is actually meant more for deeper skin tones than mine, but I really enjoy this. I haven't reviewed it yet. Um, and it's probably going to look like, did it even do anything? Um, because it's, it's like, it, disappears really quickly. But this, if you scoop a little bit out, warm it up on the back of your hand and then use your finger to like pat it in, it looks stunning on the cheeks. It's really pretty. I'm not a fan of this formula on my lips because it's a little bit waxy, but other than that, I love it. Um, then of course, as per usual, we have our little <laughs> beauty light wand section here. Um, so I have the Glowgasm in Peach ga Pink Gasm which to me is more of a blush than anything else. It's just that sort of NARS orgasm kind of shade. And then I also have the one in Peach Gasm. This is my favorite of the two, actually, because I do like a peachy blush on me. Um, and in my liquid section, I tend to have not that many peachy tones, actually. So to have a peachy toned highlighter as a liquid, I think is really nicely done. And then from e.l.f. I have the blush in candle lit, which is more of a rose gold. I keep thinking I can just pull it off, but you have to, it's got a twist cap. Um, so this is like, if you marry pinkgasm and peachgasm, I feel you get candle lit from e.l.f. Uh, again, something I still need to review, but pretty nonetheless. Uh, let me like do these like stick things here because I don't have too many of those. Like this is an actual liquid blush. Um, this is from Amuse and I'm not sure if you can see, but the doe foot is a flower. I mean, how cute is that? Let me put it here. because I think we can see the best. And this is like a very nice light, like peachy pink. It's very pretty. I haven't put this on my face yet as I'm filming this. Then I have the Victoria Beckham blush stick in mini skirt. Love this thing. This had to grow on me though. I didn't love this instantly, but it's like a warmer tone mauve. It's really pretty. And then I have this NYX Wonder Stick. It's got two shades. 
Um, this is why I don't like these dual ended things because there's always one shade that doesn't work for you and then one that kind of does, but this I didn't like. I just don't like how thick and waxy this formula is. It's not that great for blending. This is the uh, Giorgio Armani Neo Nude Co Melting Color Balm in sh shade 50. Yes, this is what it looks like. It's very much like a gray tone mauve. Like, look at that shade. Like, this is how it looks if it's like full on. And then if I swatch it here, you can just see how cool tone that is. It's a cream to powder formula. Uh, so it feels a bit cream, but it, it's got like the blendability of a powder. It looks stunning on my skin tone, especially in the winter time. Um, moving on then to this guy here. This is quite new to me. This is by Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt, no, Soft Pop Blush Stick in Dusty Rose. Um, I got this from Sephora in France when I was traveling there. Super happy I now have this. Uh, I wanted to get one of these when I was in, the, in London, but this shade and the other shade I was interested in had sold out. But this, like it looks so full on, but look at what happens when you blend this in. Like when you blend it, it's like the perfect dusty rose shade. It's not too warm, it's not too cool. It's that perfect neutrally middle ground where it still looks like a flush. And usually, as you'll see, with a lot of my creams and liquids, I normally like something much more vibrant. So with creams, like with creams and liquids, I just feel it shears out a lot. So that's why I like brighter things like this, for instance, the Fiv uh, Pitapat Hyper Fit uh, Color Serum. This is apparently like trending in like the K-beauty realm. And this shade, like this is what I mean with liking pretty vibrant shades. Look at how vibrant that is. But then when you blend it in, it just becomes this really nice, like subtle, pinky sort of shade. So I, I don't know what this looks like on my face yet because I haven't used it yet because I just got it in, but it's very pretty. One of my favorites that's more of a neutral is this Jelly bl a Dough Blusher from Holika Holika. Uh, I don't remember the shade rose jelly and this is a putty sort of blush it's very strange but it's very pretty on i've used this so much already this thing is getting used <laughs> it just is and it's this really nice sort of like peachy pink like i like my blushes to be light but to still have enough color but nothing too crazily um pigmented then we have another K-Beauty thing. This is the I'm Uni in Plum. Yes, it's the melting blush. And that's, that's what happens when you stick your finger in the, into this. So again, I like shades like this that seem like they're gonna be too deep. And the reason why I like them is because these are the shades that are usually a little bit more cool toned. It's the deeper things that usually have a cooler undertone that I feel a lot of the shades that are geared towards light skins are. So here we have uh, Studio London. This is the Flan Faultless Blusher in Embrace. I haven't used this on my face yet either. This is one that just kind of needs a bit of warming up before you can use it. But like, it, it looks like a straight up red, right? But then when you blend it in, you can see that it has that pink undertone and that's what you want. If you want that fresh in from the cold kind of thing, it's definitely a little bit more cool tone than you might expect from looking at it in the pan, which is what I just enjoy so much about these. And then I have this e.l.f. blush. This is the putty blush in the shade Tahiti. And this is more of like a corally peachy kind of thing. Again, something you need to warm up first. Um, usually when I use cream and liquid blushes, I do it like this. I pick it up with my finger and then I rub my fingers together and that's how I apply it to my cheeks. Or I will, like with some of these like squeezy tube things, what I will do is that I squeeze some on the back of my hand and then use that method. I put the e.l.f. right here. And these putty blushes and also the bronzer are a little bit sheer, uh, but you can build them up really nicely. Okay, so it was a little blown out, so I've adjusted the lighting settings just a little bit, so hopefully you can still see. 
Uh, what else? This is also quite new to me. This is the Lily by Red. As I mentioned several times, this is a Korean brand that I wanted to try some more from ever since I've tried a couple of their products. Uh, this is their Cream Blush in Love Beam Cheek Balm in shade 03, which I can't open it. Hold on. Essentially, it's a mauve, <laughs> but like a warmer mauve. Like a lot of mauves, I have to say, in terms of blushes, are usually a little bit more warm toned and not as cool toned as some people might like, but I like this one. This is really pretty. It's like a little bit more peachy pink on the on the cheeks when you get there. But the K-Beauty Realm also has some excellent liquid blushes. Um, these are some of my favorites. That's why I have four of them. I bought raspberry and strawberry first. I'm not mistaken. So this is strawberry, which is a really pretty like peachy pink. This is stunning in the spring summer season. I just love these then. So again, a little bit that same texture as the Fieve. Um, very sheer, really pretty. And then this is Raspberry, I believe. And I kept this one over a shade I had from uh, Rare Beauty, actually. I had, I bought a new one um, just now because I love the formula of the Rare Beauty. But I had Grace and it was so similar to this. And this is what I mean that if you go for shades that in the bottle don't look like they're gonna work like this is so much cooler toned than the other one is just saying and then i have guava which is this really pretty like pink tone oops it's like a really nice like nudie pink and it's not too warm i feel it's got a bit of warmth but not too much that was a bit much. And then last but not least, I have Cherry. Um, I'd like to get more of these. I know they do some really pretty, like, truer cool tones, but those are always out of stock. So <laughs> I'm never able to get my hands on it. So here we have that, and it's like a really nice cooler tone red. That same formula, but then in much more cumbersome packaging is done by M Cosmetics. I had four of these as well, and I decluttered most of them because they were just not quite right for me. I just kept one shade because this I felt was a more special one of the ones I had, like in terms of like the rest of my makeup collection. This is in Venetian Rose, right? Yes. And I do actually, one of the brands I want to, um, one, once my low buy is over, one of the brands I'm going to be buying from is M Cosmetics because they did a really pretty cool tone color story. And they're actually, they've come out with some blushes in this formula. And they've now also changed it to a dropper style rather than this like mechanism. It now just comes with like a squeezy, like a, the droppers you find on skincare, which are just going to be easier to use. And they now do some cooler things as well. So as pretty as this is, it's also a little bit warm toned. I love wearing this post-summer, like in the fall time, shades like this just work on me because it's like, like if you think about it, if you are as pale as I am, like I'm a pretty light-skinned person, NW15 in MAC uh, is usually my reference point, and that's sometimes still a little bit dark, especially in the winter time. So I go pale and pale and pale and pale at the start of the year. Like right now I'm getting towards my palest shade because there's no sunlight. I definitely have blushes for different seasons. Seasons, not gonna lie. This I thought was gonna be a powder blush by Fui. Um, this is uh, Icy Heart, which again has really difficult to open packaging. This is another K-Beauty brand. Look at how pretty this is. It's a lavender, but it's this like putty texture. Like you can, it's like a bit like the MAC Glow Play blushes. We'll see those in a minute because I keep them with my powders and not with my creams for some reason. And this is so light. Like I'm not even sure this is going to work on me. Like if you have super fair skin, I think, I think this like in like February, I think this is going to be super pretty for me. Shall we do all of my K-Beauty things first so we get those out of the way? So I have these ones as well by About Tone and Neeker. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce the word, uh, those brands, but these I wanted to try because I wanted to do a full face of, or full face, a uh, like I'm doing a dedicated series at the minute where I talk about 
cool toned, like things that are great for people with cool tones in their skin tone. And I think this about tone blush, like K-Beauty is where it's at if you want a lavender blush. They just are, this is so pretty on. And then this Neeker one is similar. This is Dolcetto Lavender. Um, but this is a little deeper, I feel. It's a little bit more pink, perhaps. The other one from About Tone is like a true, like just true lavender. And this is a little bit brighter, but it does have that like cooler undertone. I'm sure if this lighting is the right one for this to show up. And this feels a bit more matte. This is a little bit dewier. Speaking of a great cool toned option, I didn't think this was gonna work because it just looks like a bright pink, but this is Dream Hour from Tower 28. I already knew I liked this formula because I had one of these Beach Please blushes in the past. I think it was, it wasn't in Magic Hour, it was in Happy Hour, but it was just not my shade. But look at, on my undertone, this has purple in it. Like in the pan, it looks like a straight up bright pink, right? It's not. If I use it, like you can just see how much blue this has. So this is why it's so important to select things that go with your undertone more so than whether something is too dark or too light for you because this is a beautiful cool tone pink that has enough blue and purple running through it that if you shear this out, it can look lavender if you have incredibly cool tone skin. <coughs> Shall we do these like squeezy tube things next? Cause they're so nicely lined up here at the bottom. It all started for me with the Glossier, but you can see that drugstore brands are starting to do this kind of thing as well. I first got Storm and this again proves my point why getting a shade that's too dark for you, but that has a better undertone is going to work. So my one reason for not owning more of these Glossier cloud paints is very simple. A lot of them are warm toned especially the ones that they have like envisioned for people with light skin. Now I've taken a little too much perhaps, so let me really shear this out. This is one of those things where a little goes a long way, but if you shear it out, this is gonna go down my wrist. If you shear this out, you can just see that it does have a bit of a berry undertone to it. So this has a hint of purple to it that on my cheeks with the redness that I naturally have going on underneath, really shines through. Like you can really see it here on the tip of my finger, how it sort of is like a brassy berry shade, which is why I always picked Storm first until, until <laughs> in 2023, they came out with some lighter shades. This is Wisp. And this is my favorite of the two now, because this is what I wanted Glossier to do before. And this is, you know, your pinky lavender that they didn't quite do yet. So this is again, like on me, this pool's so purple and I love it. <laughs> this is how you can tell, like if cool tone blushes like this, just pull purple on you, you know you have a cool toned undertone. And this is why I'm shearing them out because with cream blush, you really have to see the sheared out version for it to make sense on your skin, it just does. This is from Kruidvat. This is their gel cream blush in Delicate Rouge, which turned out to be a completely different shade than I had envisioned from the tube because it's like a very light pink, which you might think, you know, light pink, not that revolutionary, but this, this, is, this is actually quite nice. I really like it. It has a really stunning formula. Uh, and again, for the winter time when I'm like at my palest, it's got a hint of like a bluish tone to it. It kind of blends away on my hand because I've also swatched so many other things today. But on my cheeks, when I'm like not wearing much else, this is really stunning. Something I wasn't a fan of <laughs> was a texture of this, the Super Dewy from Makeup Revolution. Um, this is their version of like the Glossier thing, it seems, but this I didn't love. Ooh, <laughs> there's a reason why I don't love it. It makes squirty noises, there's that, but it also has a very thick formula. The shade is nice. I mean, it's a really nice cool tone pink for sure. Um, but like cool tone pinks like this, I have so many of these in my powder blushes that I don't really feel it's worth it. Like this is just a little thick and heavy and it's not as dewy as I'd like it to. Ooh, plus it smells like alcohol. 
but yeah, it, it, it's, it's nice. It's a good product for sure for the price point, but it's a little bit too intense and not blushy enough for me. Like it doesn't do what I'd like it to. Um, but my favorites from the drugstore have to be these MUA things. <laughs> Let's start with the deeper one. This is Razzleberry. And here again, remember what I said about sometimes going for something deeper and incredibly crazy looking can be really pretty, even if you have fair skin. So this is like super vibrant, but look at that cooler undertone. It, it turns into a bright pink on me. I mean, again, a little goes a long way. I need, to, I need a very light hand with this, but look at this. Look at that undertone. This is so pretty. Like if I want an amped up look or if I want to do like an underpainting kind of moment. And then we have these two. Watermelon is really pretty as well. But like Razzleberry, this is intense. And it's like a corally, peachy, orange kind of shade, which we all know. I like those in a powder blush more so than I do in a cream format, but I just really wanted to try the formula and it pulls very orange on camera. It doesn't look this orange on my cheeks. It looks more of like a melon, like a softer orange, which I feel I can get down with. And then I have the blushed liquid cream blush in Dusky Rose. This is my favorite of the three. And here again, you can just see that it has that cooler undertone. Oh, there's... So this, this is the one I use the most. Like when I was using these, like like dedicated to these in a shut my stash. This is the one I reach for the most because it blends into my skin tone so well. Rare Beauty then, next. <laughs> uh, this is Nearly Rose. I I'm one of the very few people who do like this cream formula from R Rare Beauty. Let's see if mine has dried up or if it just needs a bit of warming up. It just needs a bit of warming up. This is incredibly vibrant. It just is. But here again, like it has that like cream to powder sort of feel to it. Because it's so vibrant, I feel like I can make it work. It turns a bit of a reddish pink on me. Stunning. Um, this is the one I've had for the longest. This is Hope, which is a bit of a peach, which was a bit surprising to me that this is the one I liked. So let me do the dots next to each other first. And then we have Encourage, which I picked up last. Because this is like the more moth tone version of Hope. Uh, the thing with Rare Beauty that you need to bear in mind is that when they call something cool-toned, it's not cool-toned if you have cool-toned skin. It's cool-toned for people with warm undertones, if Rare Beauty calls anything, like, cool-toned. At least that's that's my experience with them. <laughs> like, they'll say something is cool-toned, or it looks really cool-toned in their promo pictures, and then it just isn't. So this is not going to look cool-toned if you have a very cool undertone. I feel that Encourage, for me is like the liquid mauve tone blush that I was waiting for. But you can see, like when it shears out, you can see that orange coming through. I'm not sure if you can see, yeah, especially in the viewfinder here. It looks very orange. In real life, this has like a rosy purpliness to it that I really enjoy. This is Hope, and it's more of like a peach. Let me see if I can spread it out enough. <laughs> or whether the dot was too much. And these are both the dewy formula, but this way I think you can see the difference. Like Hope is more peach, and this is more of like a browner mauve tone, but like you can just see on my finger how purple this looks. So on me, the undertone definitely does come through, but I think if you have a true cool undertone, that this Rare Beauty thing is not gonna look cool toned. It's gonna look too warm toned on you. Some Essence Bits. This I'm gonna have to take off really quickly, so I'll swatch it second. Baby Gut Blush in Tickle Me Pink. As much as I like the bronzer, this blush shade, it is cool toned, but not really my vibe. I love the bronzer, the blush, not really a thing for me. And then the What A Tint, this is like Benetint, but then by Essence. And this is why I need to take it off because this is a, a stain. So I'm just gonna put it there because else I will not be able to. Again, it turns this color, right? So it's one of those things that color changes to your pH level. I don't really believe in those things, but it is really nice and vibrant. So I was hoping that if I didn't touch it, like it's, it's faded, it's okay. 
Um, but I don't like this kind of product because you don't have any time to blend with it. Like it stains where you put it. Don't love it for that reason. Love this guy. The cream from Fenty Beauty. The cream blush in strawberry drip. This is absolutely stunning. And this is like a pink, it's a coral, but it's a pinky coral rather than an orange coral, which is very different for most blushes because a lot of companies will do like your NARS orgasm kind of thing, but this is again, quite cool toned. I have some Melt here, uh, Honey Thief and Daydreamer. Daydreamer is too dark for me. It's too dark. Um, I was hoping I could try this because I like trying deeper blushes, but this is just a bit too brown. It's a bit too brown for my liking. Like I can get, I can, I can make it work. I could, in a pinch, I can make it work. It has a little bit of a subtle sparkle running through it, but this, this is pushing it to what I can get down with. Like, and then Honey Thief is my favorite of the two. This is the peach, a very light peach tone. So this used to be my peach tone of choice. So here we have Honey Thief. So I do really like that shade. It has a bit of a dewy finish, but nothing too sparkly. Like this one has actual sp sparkles in it. So I didn't really need that. We have some ColourPop here. This is one that are super shocks. This is in Cruel Intentions. And I like this a lot. It's just perhaps a little bit too similar to some things I've already shown you. And this is one of their more matte things. See, I do really like that shade. And finally, we have some Sydney Grace things. Um, this is the lightest one I have. This is my better half. These came in mystery bags. I really enjoy the formula, but shade-wise, these don't all work for me. So this is, again, a bit of a peachy, rosy pink. This is the one I've been using the most. Very pretty. It looks straight up orange here. Is this? Then we have Strawberry Cheesecake, which is the next one up. I think this is, yeah, this is my favorite one of the three because uh, it has that sort of hint of plum running through it. So it's a bit of a mauve. So I like that a lot. Again, a little bit warmer. And then this is strawberry cream, which is the deepest one I have. And this is like a reddish tone brown, but I like this one as well. I just, ooh, I'm smudging everywhere. Um, but this is just a bit like out there for me. Like it's a bit like the melt where I like it. I really love the formula. It shears out beautifully. Now it's time for powder. And here we have all of my powders. As I already mentioned, there's not a lot here that is new. Everything that's like newer to me is on top, save for this guy. Uh, so these are the ones I'm sure that are new. Everything else that is here was already in this collection last year, I think. So let me focus on these ones first. Um, because those are the newer things. I'll swatch it here on the forearm. So this is my newest blush from Kiko. This is the Unlimited Blush in shade 10, which is Warm Mauve. It is a Warm Mauve. That's exactly what it says on the tin, and that's what it does. It looks a little bit cool toned when I put it on my finger, but I feel that once it goes onto the lids, that sort of brownish tone comes through, and it pulls a bit peachy on me, but it is very stunning. One of my favorites this year was the Catrice Air Blush Glow in Berry Haze. You can see how much I've used this. Like, look at those brush scratches. Like, I take blush use quite seriously, guys. So here we have that blush. It's a cooler toned option from Catrice that I like. It's a very nice light pink. And then one that I've still put, got to put on my face is this Sephora blush. This is shade 51. And I bought this because I was going to do that cool tone blush video that I had decided I want to do. And I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. And this is that light pink, but that has a bit of a purpley pool to it. So if you put it next to the Catrice, you can just see that the Catrice one is more of a truer pink. And this has a bit more lavender to it. And then something I really wanted to try was this, and I finally got my hands on it. This is a K-Beauty brand. This is Too Cool Art Class by Rodin. And this is their D, uh, just mauve, I think it's called. And this is what it looks like. Another great cooler toned option. 
if you like that in your blushes. It's very light. It's like a very light pink. But look at it's even lighter than any of these. And this is the three shades mixed together as well. So loving those. And then Kaleidos came out with this whole range of new blushes and they're all incredibly light, at least most of them. Some of them are a bit brown, so I didn't get all of them, but I got Pearl Bliss and Pale Rose. And I'll swatch this one first. This is Pale Rose. It looks beige in the camera, but it's, I'm, I'm telling you, it's like a cooler toned, very light pink. I'll swatch it next. Ooh, it's very similar to the art class. A little bit more pigmented. And then Pearl Bliss. Is like that, but an actual beige tone. Can I get it focused? Yeah. So this is an actual beige tone. So we'll put that, but it's like a very good nude for me. Like a very good nude kind of blush. And I felt similarly about this one from Kreitfeld. I bought this for a full face of Kreitfeld and this is a product I've been wanting to try. It's in rose pink. It's their baked blush. And it's sort of like this thing makes me think of Hourglass, but like cheap Hourglass. <laughs> if Hourglass were a drugstore brand. So maybe I should take, maybe I should take one of my Hourglass blushes next, but look at that. It's a very nice rosy pink. I really do enjoy that. Really nice formula. Cause I was thinking maybe it's a bit like mood exposure, a bit. <laughs> So let me swatch that next to it. I think this is cooler tone though. Even though on some people, mood exposure is a warm tone. These blushes are in the way. Here we go. That's mood exposure. So you can see that the Kreitfeld is a bit more pink. It pulls a bit peach here. And then we just have the pure nude baked blush from Essence. I didn't love this because I had so many of these like more cooler toned, like this kind of blush shade in my shop my stash that month and this is just a bit too intense for me like I can't really get this to blend and look nice it looks a bit clownish and then I have the cheek affair from Catrice in love at first swipe and this is that sort of Wayne Goss kind of but at the drugstore <laughs> if you saw my highlight collection you know what I'm talking about this blush is really pretty but I don't really use use products like this like it's got a bit of shine like it's, it's really pretty. It's a nice, like, cooler toned option. It pulls a bit plummy on me. Love it. So th these four I love, this I love. Some of these I'm like, meh. Okay, so we have everything else laid out in front of us. So let me get swatching. And let's start just here with these Urban Decay, uh, Urban Decay blushes. These are really old. These are their Afterglow blushes. This is in Rapture. And this is in uh, Bittersweet, yes. And Bittersweet, I actually often use with this Melt Blush. This is in the shade Electra. This is one that are blush lights and it's a blush topper. And I'll show you what happens to this. So this is Rapture, which I love in the fall time. This is quite possibly one of the best, like more plummy toned things that isn't too cool, isn't too warm, like it's the best of both worlds. But then we have these purpley tones and I'll swatch them separately first and then I'll top Electra over the Urban Decay as well. So here we have them side by side. So here's the Urban Decay. These are so old but they still blow they still swatch so nicely. And this is Electra. Now I wouldn't use Electra by itself. It's a bit too pale. Even for me. And I'm not sure if they still do it because I got this on major sale. Um, but then if you swatch them together. So we've taken some fresh swatches here. So here's the Urban Decay going on. And then you take a bit of this. And you can really see that the depth of the Urban Decay, like it doesn't really work here because of finger swatches. But if you do this with brushes on your cheeks, the Electra blush kind of tones this down and makes it a lot more wearable. Um, we already talked Hourglass, so let's do Hourglass next. These look gross because I use them quite a bit. This is Incandescent Electra, which is your corally thing. And this is Diffused Heat, which is a 
more orangey toned red. That's how I would call it. But because it has the infusion, because it has it is it is infused with one of the hourglass ambient lighting powders, it has a bit of glow. It's it just works really well for me in the summertime, this kind of shade. This as well, these like peachy coral things that you see I have are summer shades. Spring, summer is when I go for these kind of things. Incandescent Electra is infused with one of their strobe lighting powders. So this has a bit more glow even than diffused heat has. This one here, this is my pinky toned red. This is Tarte's Natural Beauty. Um, and this is one I picked up because I just thought it looked really pretty. So this is more of like a winter shade for me. This is that fresh out from the cold kind of thing that we saw a lot. Um, Tarte blushes are not great at swatch it, swatching. So you can see this has an orange undertone and this has a pink undertone on me. And then my favorite nude blush from Tarte, I haven't used this in such a long time, but I still love it. This is Seduce. And this is my perfect nude blush. That's how I use this one. So that's a great nude for me. It's a bit mauve, but not too much. It, it's cool tone, but it has enough warmth. Like it really has that blend. Um, and then I have an entire family of MAC blushes down here. Let me take those up. I have two of the extra dimension and two of the glow plays. This, this is what made me fall in love with MAC blush. I didn't love MAC blush. Don't shoot me. But this, the glow play blush and heat index changed the game. So you saw me swatching. There's something on that blush. You saw me swatching my Fenty Beauty in Strawberry Drip. This is that, but with an orange undertone. So this is a coral, but this leans a little bit more orange on me than it does pink. And then I have uh, Rosie Does It, which is again a, an, an, a way of showing you that if you, even if you have fair skin, you can get away with intense blush shades like this, because this is cool toned. Shop your undertone, not your skin tone. I would say, because this sheared out, I'm not sure if it shears out here because I'm swatching it so full on, but with a brush, and actually I use this with fingers. Again, I use my, I use these as I do creams. And you can just see it has this purpley undertone. Then I'll swatch these the other way around. So this is the MAC Extra Dimension Blush in Rosy Cheeks. Same, same thing here applies. Um, this is more of a magenta color and I don't have anything like it. And this is marketed towards deep skin for sure. Like if, if a makeup artist would help you at a counter and you have pale skin like mine, they're not gonna give you this shade. But here's why I love it. It has a pinky red undertone with a bit of a pink flash. So pretty. And then we have Dilly Dally, Dilly Dolly. This was from a limited edition collection. This is a pink with a gold. I actually have some of this things, some of these things in my highlighters. Come to think of it. Swatch that one right here. So this is very light, very different. Um, and it has a really nice glow to it. It's a bit like Electra, but pink. Some more Kiko then, my old shade fusion. Um, this is really lovely, but it's been discontinued for years. And I've been looking for a mauve tone that could potentially like replace this. Um, but this is definitely cooler tone than a one that I bought later. So I'm not exactly sure if they still do anything like this. I'll swatch them side by side so you can see. So this is a little bit more pink, I feel. I've, never, I've not swatched these side by side yet. Hold. No, maybe they are similar. And this is the new one. Ooh, no, the new one is far more peachy. Do you see that? They're not the same. They're, they're similar enough that you don't need both. But I wanted to try the new formula to see how that would go. Uh, something that's also like mauve plum is the Ciate blush. This is in Matchmaker. I've had this for such a long time, but look at how much I've used it. <laughs> this, this looks atrocious. It came with a little bow imprint. Yeah, that imprint has gone. So stunning for like the fall winter season. It's really pretty. It's like a warmer tone mauve as well. Shall we do some more mauve tones? <laughs> Etude House, the lovely cookie blusher in Ginger Honey Cookie has been one of my favorites for years. This is why I, I decluttered so many of my mauve blushes last year because there were only like really two or three that where I was like, those I would still wear, you know? So it was this one and one of these Pet McGrath ones. Here we have Ginger Honey Cookie, which looks super peach here and very sheer. 
Um, but I have another one. This is Mojave Mauve from Cover Effects. And this is really pretty as well. This is more of a pink leaning mauve, I feel. And I just had it in my shop, my stash in December, actually. I'm filming this at the start of January. So that's why I, I feel these things are uh, a little less long ago than you might think. So this is really pretty. I love this formula and I love mixing the two. So when I wear this, I will mix both of these shades. Uh, let me do Pat McGrath then next. I have the Divine Blush in Divine Rose, which is this one. And this is my perfect like mauve tone blush. Like so many things I decluttered because I just have this. And if I think mauve tone blush, I'd reach for this. Like it's just really, really pretty. And then I also have the Duo Blush in Venusian Sunrise. I always think it's called Venetian Sunrise, but it's Venusian, and it's the lavender with the pink. So let me see if I can pick up a little bit of both. And here you can see how light that is. It's definitely a cooler tone pink. Thinking of like peachy things, I really enjoyed this. This was a limited edition from Essence. This is the Dumbo blush from that line. And this is sort of like now like the glowy blush from the drugstore that I keep that's in a peach. Um, I haven't reached for this a whole lot, but I do really like this shade. Like it's so pretty. I have these two over here. So this is my Petra Ta blush duo in She's Vibrant. This was first released as part of a palette and then it was released as is, as a single. So this is a, um, again, more of a corally pink. Patrick Ta is another brand that just does a lot of warm tones. So I'm not a huge fan of the brand because it's just all warm tones. The formula is really nice. So here's the cream and there we have the powder. There you have those two. You can just see it has a slightly like orangey undertone, but out of the entire collection, this is the only shade I can still get, get away with. I have my Natasha Denona Duo Glow here. And this is really pretty. This is in the shade Ryo. It's again like that NARS orgasm kind of vibe, but cool toned. Um, so if NARS orgasm came in a cool undertone, this is what it would look like. It's like pinky coral, but with an a icy sort of flash. Either. Um, let's do bright pinks. Kaleidos. What's this called again? I don't remember because the name isn't on it. But if you want that super vibrant, like pinky purple, then the Kaleidos one is really nice. But I also have the Dior. So this is the backstage blush in Rosy Glow. This does get a white overcast that you can scrape off if you'd like. Um, <laughs> if you have it for a long time. Um, that's always what it looked like in the stores. And I just find that the Kaleidos is a, a touch more pigmented than Dior. The Dior one is a touch lighter than the Kaleidos. So they're still different, but you really don't need both. If you want one and you find blendability more important than pigmentation, then go for the Dior. If you prefer pigmentation over blendability, go for the Kaleidos. Some benefit then we have Gold Rush, which I love just, this is like that peach thing that I just love. I just got it as a mini and they no longer do this, which is such a shame. So my battery cut out from my external microphone. And then we have Willa and Willa is a blush I bought and then I just, I didn't reach for it at all. So this is one where I feel a bit guilty, but it is a pretty blush. So I just need to, like this is why I do this, that I clock it because it's such a nice like rosy mauve. We just have a few more left. We have this guy here. This is the Cheek Lover from Catrice, both of them. Um, this is the one they came out with out uh, last. This is the marbled one. And this is sort of like what Essence Pure Nude, essentially. Um, so it's, it's a very similar shade, I feel. So it's got that vibrant sort of pinky shade. And then I have the Cheek Lover oil infused in blooming hibiscus, which is that NARS orgasm sort of vibe. But rather than the Natasha Denona, which has a cooler undertone, this has the warmth, um, but it's not super warm. It's... Then I just have my Nabla in Lola. This is the skin loving, um, skin glazing 
in Lola. And this is really pretty as well. And this is a bit of a watermelon kind of shade. So this is again different, like it's a reddish tone. And then I have my Bare Minerals Blonzer here. It's this one, which is a nice nude on me actually. It's, a, it's very pretty. Here is what that looks like. This is, like I like it, but I'm not sure if it's still as special in my collection. And then four more, and I'll just put them on my hand so I don't have to wipe off the swatches again. The Heaven's Glow Blush in Baroque from M Cosmetics and Magic Hour. Um, more nude, a bit more peach. I wish they did, did more of these in like a cooler undertone. Like how stunning would this be? If it was like a pinky lavender. If they can do that. Really pretty. So here is what Baroque looks like. A bit brown perhaps here, and that's Magic Hour, which is a bit more peach. And the last two blushes I need to show you are by Melt. These are the Digital Dust Blushes in Buzzkill, which is again like a peachy tone, and this is Raw Honey. Do they still do this? I don't know, but these are incredibly glowy, which is why I like them, and they have like the, the honey, honeycomb on the inside. These were expensive, I remember that. Like these weren't cheap, but if you want super glowy blush, Here's Buzzkill, it's the peachy toned one. And here is Raw Honey, which is a bit too dark for me, but I can kind of make it work. So that is everything from my powder blush collection. So I really hope you wa enjoyed watching this video today. Remember, I do regular content on this channel as well. Four times a week, I go, uh, I talk about all things makeup on this channel. And I still have one more video left in this makeup inventory series, which is going to be all of my lipsticks. So um, I have that in store for you just yet. And then we'll do declutters in March. So like, stay tuned for all of that goodness. And then I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.